Welcome back to my workshop. In today's video, we are revisiting a project I did just about a year ago where I made these 3D printed planter molds into which I cast both plaster and concrete to make these cute little planters. Now I have since then designed two more of these molds, a taller one and a much wider one that will make both a vase and a much larger pot. So in today's video, we're gonna try out these new molds. We're gonna cast a bunch of pots and planters and vases. We're also gonna use a material that I've used a bunch in the past, which is just my, so that we can get much nicer and vibrant colors. We're gonna play around with some different patterns and effects using this just my. So let's jump right into it and have a look at these molds. All right, so in case you haven't seen my previous video yet, these are planter molds. And regardless of the size, they will all work in the same way. Now the whole mold actually only consists of two parts. We've got the outer part and the inner part. We're gonna need three of these and then one of these. And they're gonna go together with the core in the center and then with the outer pieces interlocking into each other, forming the mold. And really quickly summarize, this is the whole mold. You can now pour whatever you want into this and it will make one of these. Now the bigger ones I've made are exactly the same. Still, three the same outer mold part and one of the core parts will lock together to form a mold that in this case will form this really cool vase. And to finish everything off, who guessed it? Same principle again, three of the outer parts. In this case, a really big inner part. All of these three go together, they form the mold and this thing is the finished result. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through the whole process. I'm gonna show you all the really cool tips and tricks that I've learned from making a whole bunch of these. We're gonna play around with a couple of different patterns and ways of mixing colors, like this gradient and the swirly pattern. And in case you wanna make some of these for yourself, I'll have the 3D files available to download for all three of the molds on my website, which is linked down in the description below. Okay, so just one more thing before we get started making all these. Now, this isn't something that I normally do, but I decided in this case that I'm gonna make a very limited amount of these products in various sizes and colors, and I'll make them available to purchase on my website. All right, so like I said, I'm gonna take you through the entire process from start to finish, showing you all the tips and tricks I learned along the way to get the best possible results. And all that starts with the preparation of the mold. Now what that comes down to is that we need to ensure that the material that we cast into this doesn't end up sticking to the different mold parts. So I've never actually had an issue where the part wouldn't release from the side of the mold. This step is much more about making it as easy as possible to reuse this mold. Because when you take this thing out of the mold, you will very likely end up with a small amount of the casting material in between the two parts. And that small amount of buildup of material on the sides here can force these two parts to fit together less precisely, ending with a less precise casting. So to fix all that and make it so that the material doesn't stick to the mold, we're gonna use the mold release wax. And this step is super simple. I'm just gonna take a tiny amount and rub it all over the entire mold. We don't want any buildup of this wax. We just want a thin layer coating everything. So I'm gonna do that to all these parts and all these as well. All right, so I've got a really thin layer of the mold release wax on all of the molds. And as you can see, I've also done that to all the other molds that I have. Now onto these core pieces for which I have a really cool trick that I also used in the last video. So yes, you can also just cover these in mold release wax, but they do have a tendency to be a little bit hard to pull out of the mold, especially these two. So I'm gonna take a balloon, cut off the neck of it, and then I'm simply gonna stretch it sort of shape it along that edge there. And now this thin layer of balloon will act like a perfect mold release, making it really easy to take out the core. You only have to do this with the two smaller ones. The big one is easy enough to remove with just mold release. All right, so I've got the balloon stretched over all the core pieces here. And I just quickly want to show you that I've actually also modified the original small planter mold. This is the original one, and this is the one I'm making now. So you can see that Compared to the ones I made in the last video, the opening on the new ones is a little bit bigger. So you can have a bigger plant in there and they also end up taking a little bit less material to cast. All right, let's get these molds together and start casting. So what I found to be the by far best way of assembling these molds and making sure that the end result ends up as good as possible is to put together the mold and then use some packing tape and really tightly tape all the way around the entire mold. And because the tape has a little bit of stretch, it will force the mold parts together really tightly, ensuring that everything lines up properly and also that nothing can leak out in between the seams. And the same thing goes for all the other sizes of the molds as well. So you can see that the mold will go from not quite aligning properly to aligning really, really well. 
We'll just do that to the rest of the molds, and then we can start casting. All right, so all the molds are ready and they're good to go. I've got a big bucket of jasmine here. The next step is to use a scale and measure out the right amount of both powder and liquid. And why don't we start with one of these tall ones? We'll do 634 grams of powder for each color. And yes, I plan on casting these in two different color tones, just like all the other ones I made, because I feel like one color is just too boring. And then once we've measured out the right amount of powder, we'll do the same with the liquid. That's one. And since we're done measuring all the quantities, everything from here on out is just gonna be mixing it together and then pouring it in. It's now time for some color. Now I do have a bunch of different colors. These are specific colors to color just mine. I've also got some of these in the smaller bottles so it's easier to dispense. And now we can basically do whatever color we want. I really, really like the contrast between white and some other color. So I'm gonna make one of these white and you can add in up to 2% of the final weight in coloring. But these are really strong. And in case you're wondering, yes, you do need to add the white pigment in order to make it white, even though the powder is white. If you don't do that, it ends up kind of a cream color. I haven't made a tall green one yet, so let's try that. Couple of drops to see how it magically transforms a little bit more. Now, maybe we'll add a little drop of yellow. All right, I'm quite pleased with this color. We're just about ready to pour this into the buckets, mix them up, and then pour them into the mold. Now, you'll notice that there's two distinctly different types of patterns I made for these. And these are all dependent on the way they're poured into the mold. For this one, I poured both colors in at the, basically the same time to get this swirly pattern. And for this one, as you can see, I've started with white and then gradually poured in the other color on top of it. So why don't we start by trying out one of these. We've got our powder and then we'll just pour in our liquids on top of there. And the same goes for the green. And using this mixing stick on a drill, we'll start by mixing up the white one. And since we started with white, we can now put this straight into the color without having to wash it. And now to get that gradient effect, we'll start with the white, pour that onto here. And here's the trick. Instead of pouring all of it in there, I've just poured a little bit. Now I'll take a little bit of my green, I'll pour that into my white, and then give that a mix. Which will create this slightly green color, which we're gonna pour on top of here. And now we'll just repeat that process until the entire mold is filled up. And now we just have to wait until that is dry. And by the way, you can definitely wash out these and use them again. All right, now while that one dries, let's try that whole thing over again, but with a different mold, and let's try a different pattern. So again, we'll measure up all the powder that we need, as well as all the liquid, and now we can make some colors. Again, go for white, and for the other one, we're gonna go with a dark blue. And we're gonna go with a tiny drop of black to make the whole thing even darker. Mix these up. And now instead of gradually mixing them together, we'll just pour them in at the same time. I sometimes like to pour one into the other, kind of having them mix as they flow down to create this pattern. And then usually when I have a little bit left over, I'll just pour it into these coaster molds that I made in my first vacuum forming video. That way, nothing goes to waste. All right, so it's the next day and all these have cured. As you can see, I ended up casting into all the molds I have. So it's time to open these up and see how they turn out. All right, so let's get all of these out of the way and we'll start with this one. We can just cut open this and it will really easily just unwrap the whole thing. I'll just sort of split these apart and with a bit of wiggling back and forth, these things should all, ha 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 ha, look at that. Oh, look at this. All right, and here's the cool trick with the balloon. We should. <laughs> that was pretty easy, right? I just love this fading effect that it gets from gradually mixing in the color and pouring it layer by layer. I'm really happy with this. Let's try the other one. So hopefully we'll get some cool swirly pattern effects out of this. And then, whoo, wow. 
<laughs> well, this is probably one of my favorite color combinations. Now, for this one, we didn't use a balloon, but still, since the core is so big and it has a nice angle on it, it comes out without a problem. Is it just so cool with just varying the way you pour it into the mold? You get so drastically different patterns out of it. I can't really decide which one is my favorite, so why don't you let me know which one is your favorite down in the comments below. As you can see, I cast a whole bunch of the small ones, so let's see how these turn out. Look at all these. These are so cool. I'm so happy with them. All right, so let's have a quick look at what I did to achieve the different patterns that I got right here. So just like with the green one here, I did the same exact thing with both the blue ones and this pink to white one. These two are actually the same exact colors. I just poured them in in different ways. Now for this yellow one, I actually did something different. You can see that it still has this sort of gradual effect, but for this one, I actually poured in white to begin with and made sure that the white coated all the surfaces on the inside with just a thin layer. And then I poured in yellow alongside the walls on the inside, hoping that it kind of would wash away some of the white, which I think it did. And I think this turned out really nice too. I'm excited to see what this actually will look like once we're finished sanding it. Which brings us to the next step, sanding. And for that, I've got this big tray here just to make sure that the water doesn't get everywhere because we're actually gonna wet sand these. Now, when it comes to the sanding, this part is pretty easy. It's just really tedious. It's just all about getting a really nice and smooth surface because the jet splat will actually copy all the small print lines from the 3D printed molds. And we also wanna get rid of that little flash line that comes from the material leaking in between the two parts of the mold. There'll be three of those and a couple on the top. So what I usually do is I'll just take a sanding block. I'll make sure that the bottom is nice and flat. I'll use the same sanding block to get rid of the small flash lines all the way around the side here, as well as the top. Now that bit is actually pretty easy. The part that is tedious is making everything nice and smooth. Luckily, just my is super easy to sand. So what I'll do is I'll usually just take a piece of 600 grit sandpaper, use some water to carry away all the small dust particles, and start sanding. I usually just start by sanding all these concave bits and I'll just move up and down along the edge here trying to preserve as sharp of an edge as possible and then I'll just work my way all the way around. It will go from being rough like one of these to being super nice and shiny like this one. And then after I've done all the concave bits, I'll do the top part here and for that, I'll usually just wrap a little bit of sandpaper around a stick. That way I can make sure that the top stays nice and flat. So it will go from one of these rough ones like this to being nice and shiny just like the rest of it. Like I said, this part is not hard, just super tedious. In case you're wondering, one of these takes me about 15 minutes to sand, one of these 30 minutes, and one of these 35 minutes. So yeah, takes a little while. I guess I've got a little bit of a project ahead of me. I've got all of these as well as all those behind me. So looks like I'll be signing for a while. All right, that was finally the last one. And boy, let me tell you, I am so tired of sanding right now. Let's get this table cleaned off and move on to the final step, which is applying a nice protective coating on all of these. All right, so this is all I got. This is all I made. I made a total of 16 of the small ones, eight of the tall ones, and four of the really big ones. Boy, let me tell you, sending all these must have taken a little bit longer than I initially expected. If I add up all the time I spent sanding over the last few days, I end up with about 12, 13 hours of just sanding. So I think it's fair to say that I'm probably not gonna make any more of these anytime soon. Luckily though, the very last step that we need to do to protect these is super simple. I'll just use some of this just my penetrating sealer. I'll just add a little bit on a cloth and then give the entire planter a nice and even coat. So I really like this sealer because it's super easy to apply and it dries really evenly. And after letting this thing dry for a little bit, we'll repeat that process for an additional two times for a total of three layers. And then they're basically done. So this is it. After a lot of casting, 
even more sanding, some more sanding and then some sanding, I'm finally done with all of these pots and planters. I've also given all these a couple of coats of penetrating sealer and you can really see that it brought out the colors a lot more. They're all a lot more vibrant, which I really love. And as you can see, I didn't only finish the pots and planters, I also made some additional coasters. Now you think that this is super quick and easy to make a couple of these. Turns out it's a ton of work to send these, especially if you have a ton of them like I had. But I got it done. They're all sanded flat. They're also all coated with a nice protective layer, just like all the other pieces. So you know what? At least for a little while, I think I'm done with mass producing products. It is a ton of work. Now, if you want to purchase any of these products, by the time you're watching this video, they'll all be live on my website, which is alch.shop. It will also be linked in the description below. Now, what you see here is what you get. There's only gonna be one of each and they're gonna be individually listed. I've also signed and numbered all the pots and planters and vases. Now, keep in mind, these are all handmade, so they're not gonna be as perfect as they would be coming out of a factory, but I feel like that's kind of the charm with handmade products. They don't need to be entirely perfect. That being said though, I am really happy with the way all of these turned out. And if you try to make them yourself, like I said, all the 3D files for all the planter molds will be available for download on my website, which is linked in the description down below. Also, one more thing to keep in mind, if you plan on purchasing any of these, I do live in Norway and these are a little bit heavy, so shipping might be a little bit pricey, but unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about that. <laughs> Luckily though, there's free shipping on all the 3D files. And with that, I think I'm gonna take a break from mass producing products for a little while and go back to making project videos. The next project video is actually already right behind me, or at least the materials for it are. That pile of materials right behind me is gonna turn into a really cool office desk with a ton of really cool built-in features. So make sure to subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. As for now, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.